Santo Victor Rigatuso, aka Bob Harris, aka several other names for legal purposes, is the kind of guy that comes to my mind when I think of the 1980s. An eccentric, fast-talking grifter, with a never-ending supply of new schemes, and the compulsion to constantly talk them up as if they were the greatest thing ever. Infomercials, fake gold chains, MLM marketing, paper credit cards that were really just coupons. But perhaps the most interesting thing associated with them is a lost 1985 film, entitled Blood Circus, a movie in which aliens come to Earth to challenge wrestlers to wrestling matches, but then they eat the wrestlers. Initially promoted as an incredible two-hour sci-fi wrestling motion picture that would gross $200 million, its premiere would be attended by three people, two critics and one of the extras. Subsequent screenings of the film were not much more successful, and with no luck finding the distributor, the movie was shelved, and eventually believed to be lost forever. However, evidence that still exists has emerged over the past few years including a known working copy of the original film. So for this video, let's see if we can find Blood Circus, the lost sci-fi wrestling extravaganza. This video is sponsored by Raycon. I've had my Raycon earbuds for a few years now, and I still use them all the time to listen to music and podcasts when I'm traveling and working out. The optimized gel tips give you a perfect in-air fit so they won't budge when you're out for a run. And with 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life, they won't die either. Raycon's everyday earbuds also have three customizable sound profiles, which is useful because you're not going to want the same kind of EQ for podcasts and music, or for different kinds of music. They've also got a noise isolation mode so you can drown out the annoying sounds of the outside world. Or you know, you could switch back to awareness mode if you suddenly get afraid of getting hit by a car or something like that. Just click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash wang. You'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Blood Circus is a film that I just know would be one of the greatest, so bad that they're good, horrible movies of all time. If only we could just see it. The reasons my hopes for it are so high is because, as I mentioned before on the channel, the best so bad that they're good movies are the ones that come for one of two reasons. Either its creator had a grand artistic vision that they were just too inept to pull off, or because the creator only cared about making money. Well, Blood Circus was a movie that was tied to a company that sold fake gold. And as Santo Victor Rigatuso said about Blood Circus, the film won't make sense, it will just make dollars. So how does one even come to be a guy who makes fake gold chains in pro wrestling sci-fi movies? Santo was born in Baltimore in the 1940s, where he was bullied in school for his Tourette syndrome. He drops out in 9th grade to take over his deceased father's barbershop, beginning a lifelong habit of serial entrepreneurship. It's actually said that he was a great barber, but eventually he converts the barbershop into a record store. And after a while, he sells the record store and shifts his focus. By now, it's the 1980s. The FCC lifts its ban on program-length advertisements, which ushers in a golden age of infomercials. All of a sudden, you got the Floby, Ginsu knives. All kinds of crap is sold on late night TV, and Santo sees this as his opportunity to make some real money. So he goes and he buys himself some late night TV time. And he begins with his first infomercial product, a set of two watches. They're supposed to play the song The Yellow Rose of Texas, and you get a man's watch and a woman's watch. And believe it or not, people actually buy this crap. So much that the watches actually sell out. But when people receive the watches, they find out that there's something wrong. You see, the woman's watch doesn't play the song. In reality, the watches weren't broken. He had always intended for just the man's watch to play and for the woman's to be quiet. Al Bundy would be proud. But obviously, there's a lot of complaints about this, but he actually manages to get away with it by changing the name of the company, something he wound up doing a lot. But with no more watches to sell, he moves on to his next product, Santo Gold. Santo Gold was said to be pure 24 karat gold chains and bracelets made with Santo's specially developed process. This process? Coating a much cheaper metal with an extremely thin layer of actual gold. And despite this, once again, being obvious crap garbage, it's selling. Enough of it that Rigatuso is amassing a small fortune. A fortune which would then be used to fund his next venture. So in 1985, Rigatuso begins taking out ads in the newspaper promoting his upcoming film. Blood Circus, the incredible sci-fi two hours wrestling motion picture. It's expecting a $200 million gross. The major studios are invited to battle it out in the ring for the rights to this movie. And you can order a free 10 minute preview on Betamax or VHS. The description of the movie reads like something out of the side of a Dr. Bronner's soap bottle. 
Aliens, real blood, heads landing in popcorn, fleas, Santo gold wearing 30 pounds of gold, yada yada yada. And it concludes with Rigatuso describing his reputation. The press calls him Barnum, others Houdini for doing the impossible. Watch for his name, he usually becomes the biggest of what he does. Other than the millions being spent on TV, Newsweek and USA Today, etc. have recently mentioned Blood Circus. Uh, citation needed. Oh, and also there's a hotline to call where you can listen to the sounds of Blood Circus. Little is known though about what actually happens in Blood Circus other than the general plot. You get aliens from a planet called Zoran. They come to Earth and they challenge wrestlers from the USA and the USSR. Unbeknownst to the wrestlers though, when they lose their matches, the aliens eat them. But we can get a little bit more information about the movie from Rigatuso's infomercials which began to promote Blood Circus. And judging by the scatterbrained nature of this one infomercial, if the same mind was behind Blood Circus, you know it's a masterpiece. The infomercial opens with a masked wrestler holding on to another wrestler's decapitated head, which he then tosses into an old lady's lap. And remember, this is being aired on network television. Then we're treated to some of the in-ring action, including wrestlers getting hit by lightning bolts, glimpses of some of the finest outer space special effects you've ever seen, and a singer that resembles Douglas Levison in aviator sunglasses. You are everything that's gone wrong in this world. I want Bob Dylan up on stage. Who the fuck are you? Blood Circus is coming soon. Be sure to ask your local movie theater when. Ask your local movie house for a free screen bag. What's a screen bag, you might ask? Screen bags were these paper bags, I guess, to scream in? And printed on them was more info about Blood Circus, which are referred to as a commotion picture, featuring the brand new technologies 3D Sound Santophonics and Thunder Vision, which will shatter your seats. Alright, scams aside, how can you not love this guy? Like, they really just don't make carnies like this anymore. There's also a poem about Blood Circus written on the bag, another Dr. Bronner-esque masterpiece. Maybe I'll do a dramatic reading out of it on my second channel, Wang Uncut. Oh, and also, you get a coupon for a free diamond ring that they assure you is real and not counterfeit. The infomercial then goes on to tell you that Santo Gold is a lot like pro wrestling, which, I mean, knowing what we know about how Santo Gold is made, it's kind of an accurate description. We're also informed that there's a real rock and roll singer named Santo Gold. Not to be confused with the singer Santa Gold, who, by the way, Rigatuso would eventually sue over her name. This Santo Gold guy, the big rock star, that's of course Rigatuso himself. Well, later on in the infomercial, he'll be performing his song, also called Santo Gold, along with some more clips from the film. But for now, let's just heed the goodwill message for today. Say something nice to the very next person you see. You better do it. I'll know. The next 15 minutes of the infomercial are just about how and why you should buy Santo Gold, and also how you could become a Santo Gold salesperson yourself. Sounds a bit like an MLM scheme, but they assure you that one person made $3,000 in a single day of selling Santo Gold. Clearly, you'd be a sucker to pass up such an amazing opportunity. And then finally, the time has come for the rock and roll singer Santo Gold to hit the stage and perform his amazing song for his adoring fans. His song, of course, is about what else? How you can buy Santo Gold, what amazing quality Santo Gold is, and how it has a money back guarantee. Tell me it's just not stuck in your head right now. While he's singing, angels look down from heaven and talk about what a great singer he is. And then they tell a joke. Oh, by the way, do you know why the pregnant lady went into the pizza parlor? Was she hungry? No, they had free delivery. As promised, cut into the performance are scenes from the movie, most recognizably featuring the wrestler Ox Baker, as well as wrestlers from the Southwest Championship Wrestling promotion. You also got wrestlers bumping on what is apparently a boxing ring with no give whatsoever. It's a lot more dangerous than a normal wrestling ring. And that was just one of the many reported problems with these scenes. So the wrestling scenes for Blood Circus were shot at the Baltimore Civic Center. It's a venue that was no stranger to wrestling. They'd have events from WWF and WWWF before that. And this movie shoot was promoted as a wrestling event that you can tend where a movie was being shot. So people paid to be an extra in this movie, with numbers reported anywhere from $9 to $20. And if you look online, there's several accounts floating around for people who claim to be in the audience that night. You might be shocked to find out that they didn't get exactly what they were expecting. I was actually at a filming of a wrestling match that was supposed to be used in Blood Circus. It was at the Baltimore Civic Center, as I recall. I went with my friend and we took my Super 8 movie camera. A pair of rent cops confiscated our roll of film. Fortunately, we had another stashed away and shot that one. 
this time being a little more discreet. The audience was the usual unwashed kids and grannies at a low rent wrestling event, and man were they pissed when it turned out to be a sham. It was advertised as a wrestling match slash come be in a movie event. Long pauses while nothing happened, with people screaming for blood, with local announcer Charlie Ekman trying to move the non-existent show along. There were aliens, bad dummies as I recall, lowered from the roof to suck the brains slash blood of wrestlers. There were fake severed heads tossed about. My favorite part was a wrestling tag team named the Cryin' Blondes. Hit them and they cried, which they indicated by spinning slash rubbing their fists in their eyes, baby style. All the while, Mr. Santo himself ran around with a bullhorn, looking exactly like Phil Spector. A great night, still have the film somewhere, I guess. And the reports of the long pauses, people being angry about the long pauses, and just the general chaos of the night in general are consistent among these reports. But ultimately, despite all the problems, eventually they get everything they intended to shoot. The movie is completed, and once editing is done, Rigatuso begins to seek distribution for the film. The premiere, as I mentioned in the intro, reportedly only has three people show up, two movie critics and an extra. And after two years of failing to find the distributor, in 1987, Rigatuso decides he's just gonna do it himself. So he rents out a few theaters in Baltimore over the course of a week. It's unclear how many people actually attended, but it was nowhere near enough to make up the cost of the film, and in all likelihood, not enough to make up the cost of renting out the theaters. And thus, Blood Circus gets shelved indefinitely. Some thought the film was simply destroyed after this, while others believed it was among the items confiscated when he was arrested for mail fraud in 1989. You see, his various scams had finally caught up to him, and boy were there a lot of them. Santo Gold itself ran into trouble in 1985. See, one of their methods of making sales was using cash on delivery. They would just send cash on delivery packages to random addresses containing Santo Gold. There would be a label on them that said, you ordered this from TV. Which, clearly they didn't, but in theory some people are gonna see that and they're just gonna be like, oh, yeah, I guess I did and I just forgot about it. Whoopsie daisy. And boom, they buy it. Free money. Obviously, this is extremely not legal. And it just so happens that one of these packages winds up at the home of the Pennsylvania Postal Inspector. Then he had another one that very closely resembled the Nigerian Prince scam. He claimed that an anonymous millionaire had recently died and he was giving away his fortune in $2,000 chunks. And you could have one of these pieces of his fortune for, you know, a small processing fee. Of course, the people who paid the processing fee would either wind up getting nothing at all or they would get a package full of junk that was supposedly worth $2,000. And then he got the one that ultimately led to his arrest. He had a company called the Credit Card Authorization Center. The idea was it would help people who didn't have the best credit rating get a card from something like Visa or MasterCard. And you just have to pay a fee up to $50. But then once again, they'd either receive nothing or they'd get paper credit cards that could only be redeemed for products in Santos catalog. When this all finally comes to a head, Rigatuso winds up spending 10 months in prison, and nothing would be heard of Blood Circus for a very long time. Not until 2001. In 2001, Santo Gold creates a website that's selling a one-hour making of Blood Circus DVD, describing it as the most incomprehensible, bizarre, and of course note that bizarre is spelled not like something strange, but the place Aladdin shops. Funniest wrestling movie ever made, with many actual scenes in the movie, Blood Circus, Please click contact us above or below. Thank you. Rated N and E for nuts and everybody. Hey, it's guys like me. Oh, yeah, and he also announced his new song entitled You're Fired, which is of course inspired by Donald Trump. This could be heard on his YouTube channel along with other songs like Vietnam for John McCain and Obama Stomp. To my knowledge though, nobody actually got the one hour making of DVD. But there'd be another update in 2008. The official Santo Gold website, breaking news, the actual Blood Circus Masters and 35mm Negatives, first full-length 35mm wrestling film reported lost for 23 years, have now been found, and limited license rights are now available for executive producers to come forward and contact us. There can only be one Elvis Presley, one Walt Disney, one Einstein, one Houdani, <laughs> and just one Santo Gold. Oh, and he was also promoting a talent search where you, yes you, had a chance to be seen by millions by joining Santo's Top 10 Hall of Fame. He also added a statement about learning from his mistakes, claiming that the reason why the Santo Gold product had the problems it did was that he hired manufacturers who couldn't handle the job, and also that his employees stole cash and threw away the orders. 
It's also worth knowing that around this time, you have a bunch of edits to the Blood Circus Wikipedia page, made by someone named Jetrack843, who writes an awful lot like Santo, and is trying to make the page include info about his lawsuit against Santigold, and also about Santo's new music. And a couple of years later in 2011, an eBayer also named Jetrack is selling the Blood Circus reels. They have a starting bid of $21 million, and a buy it now price of $750 million. You might be surprised to find out it did not sell. But in 2013, the reels would be up for sale again, this time by a different, more established eBay user. They claimed it was in extremely good condition and was acquired minutes before being tossed in a landfill. This time, the bidding ended at $222.50. This was below the reserve price, and therefore, once again, it did not sell. The next year, in 2014, this seller would go on to privately screen the film at the Alamo Drafthouse in Austin. This was proof that what they had was legitimate, and they'd relist it in 2015, this time with a buy it now price of $3,499. The sale ultimately ended, saying the item was no longer available. And the last known whereabouts of this print pop up on the Lost Media Wiki forums in 2020. A user named ZX the Proto mentions coming in contact with the person who ultimately purchased this print from the eBay seller. This anonymous person was willing to let ZX's group scan some of his rare movie prints, but not Blood Circus, likely due to its rarity and value. You see, from a collector's perspective, if you have this thing that's one of a kind, super rare, never been seen, that's worth a lot of money. As soon as the general public gets to see it, your investment is suddenly worth nothing. But ZX mentioned that perhaps this person will change their mind at some point. So now that we know what happened to the movie, what happened to Santo Gold himself? An obituary surfaced claiming that Santo Victor Rigatuso died in 2015. The birth date, abundance of alternate names, and the fact that he did at some point live in Winter Garden, Florida all match up. However, both his website and his YouTube channel have been updated since his supposed death. With the release of an unrelated film also called Blood Circus in 2017, the site was updated to reflect that this is a different movie. And in 2019, a video was uploaded to Santo Gold's YouTube channel saying the following, We are the owners of Santo Gold's Blood Circus wrestling movie. We want everyone to contact us and let us know who wants to see it. Visit www.santogold.com. Please fill out our contact form. It's worth noting that at this point, they never speak in first person. So it's possible that Santo did pass and these are simply people carrying on his legacy, which at the bottom says copyright 2021 Santo Gold, and still charmingly has that 90s style mishmash of keywords at the bottom to try and game search engines. So where does that leave us? We know that the film is in excellent condition, and it's in the hands of a private collector, but this collector isn't willing to let people see it right now. And we also know that either Santo Gold or people carrying on his legacy are trying to find a way to distribute the movie finally. And with all that being said, I just have to wonder, of all the ways he could have tried to expand his gold business, why a sci-fi wrestling movie? I mean, at that period in time, in the 80s, you did have a bit of a wrestling boom. That was the rock and wrestling era. A term that, by the way, Santo claims to have coined himself. I also wonder if the idea of doing a sci-fi wrestling movie was inspired by the luchador who shared Santo's name. That, of course, being El Santo. El Santo was a Mexican wrestler who starred a lot of movies where he'd battle aliens and all sorts of monsters. And I mean, according to a person connected to the film, who spoke anonymously to Brian Last on his 605 podcast, surprisingly, Santo actually was a really big wrestling fan. And with that in mind, you look at Santo Rigatuso, how he carries himself in those infomercials. He looks like a wrestling character. He acts like a wrestling character. He even stretches the truth like an 80s wrestler. Looking at you, Hulk Hogan. In another life, I could absolutely see him killing it as a pro wrestling manager. Perhaps this movie was really his way of taking his newfound wealth and using it to live out a long lost pro wrestling dream of his. Thinking about it that way makes me want to see this so much more. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, check out my video about the Vince McMahon's ass cartoon.